Hello everyone, welcome to Geology Concepts. In this new series, we are going to see current affairs. In this series, we have decided to cover current affairs on a weekly basis in which we will be covering current affairs of the last one week. So in this week, we have we have covered current affairs from 10th of July to 16th of July and the first topic is here in front of you which is World Population Prospects 2022. So in this, uh, in this, in this data prospect report, we, uh, the, the important thing is that it has given the, the total population of the world and of India also. So few important things are here. So before I start uh, current affairs, uh, I would like to tell you one thing is that in your examination like UPSC, the current affairs thing is really vast. It's, it's a humongous thing. So while you, if you are ever, if you are reading on or studying on your own or you are watching a video or something, the first thing you need to keep in your mind that you have to be very precise while you studying or while you are reading any current affairs or any magazine or any data or any any resource right so in this case you have to be very careful you need to just know the key points and that's why this video has it will be very useful for you people because i have compiled every important things here which is going to be important for you people regarding this geology examination i mean geologist examination of upsc so okay moving forward and let's see which one is the first topic we just we have decided we have just started this world population prospect in which few key points i have mentioned which are very important just have a look so the first thing is now we have been we have become an 8 uh, 8 billion population worldwide in 2022 which means in 2022 we have 8 billion people on earth right and india has become 1.4 billion population as on july 1st right and as the report says india will take over china as the most populous country by 2023 means next year means next year we will be the most populous country in this in this world right this thing is really important this must i mean uh, ring bells in the parliament that we must introduce population control bill right because india has limited resource limited water resource limited land resource and limited everything and then we have we have become the most populous country is really a cause of concern so this is it but the one thing which which, which is good is that as per nfhs india's total fertility rate is only 2.0 which is below the uh, replacement rate which is the replacement fertility rate is I mean rate is just 2.1 right and we have 2.0 so but the thing is few more few states have uh, more than this fertility rate which is a cause of cause of concern like in the states like bihar U, uttar pradesh charkhand chhattisgarh these states have more uh, fertility rate so those states have to work on the population control and then we will uh, we will be able to control our population so the next thing is okay this thing is very important for us so there is some uh, negative some positives the positive is that now india can say in united nations security council that we have become the most populous country and we don't have a seat in the uh, the security council so we must be given the secure uh, a seat a permanent seat in the security council so india's claim will be now now it becomes quite legit that the most populous country cannot be left behind or cannot be kept outside the door of the security council so this is one thing if india trains its population it can export its population its its trained workforce and it can uh, earn foreign exchange so but there are law, law and order concern and issues like law and order issues it's there but there are few other things also that how to feed this huge population with limited resources so indian government has a tough task to cater to all these people anyway moving to the next topic which is global gender gap index this is released by world economic forum right you can see it here world economic forum forum and india at is at 135 place out of 146 country which is not very good so and in the last year india was at 140th place which out of 156 which was again not very good so the four parameters the the main thing the the good thing about the, i mean the the important thing about this report is that these four parameters these are the four parameters on which the global gender gap is measured 
and the first is economic participation political empowerment education and health and survival but this thing this health and survival in in this in this front india is at the worst place i mean india at the 46 146th place which is a cause of concern because you see again you see this also tells that we have become the most popular we are going to become the most populous country in just few months and we don't ha we do not have a health proper health care system in place so this all these things places a huge 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 strain on the exchequer of the government right because to feed all this and take care of this huge population you need to have a you need to spend a lot of money on this thing right now something about world economic forum which is international this is an international organization for public private partnership public and private private means any individual any organization can also take part in this public means the governments are also part of it or may take interest in this established in 1971 headquarters is at geneva major reports three major reports are there so energy transition index global competitiveness report and global gender gap report so so the last one we have already seen three two more reports are there which is very important so you need to keep in mind that energy transition index global competitiveness report and global gender gap report these three reports ha are being published by world economic forum so moving to the next topic which is dark matter this topic is very important because this uh, is a little interesting what is first of all let me tell you what is dark matter dark matter kya hota hai to agar hum isko dekhe dark matter what is dark matter i have drawn a circle here and i divided into three parts so the first part is visible part visible universe is 5% you means this means what you can see or what you can see through any telescope like hubble telescope or james webb telescope is only 5% of this whole universe you what you see or what you can see through any means is only 5% what you do not see is 95% so this actually <laughs> this actually tells you or just suggests you that how big our universe could be we do not have any idea about that right so the dark matter and the next thing is if something is visible is 5% only so what is, is what is that thing which is not visible to us so that is the combination of dark matter and dark energy so the bigger part is dark energy and the smaller part is dark matter dark matter complete contains only 7, 27% and dark energy comprises of 60 holds the 68% share in this whole setup so there is a difference between dark energy and dark matter we will not go into that First of all, we need to understand this test detector, Lux Zeppelin detector. This is a detector, this is an underground setup which is in the USA and this is a collaboration of US, UK, Portugal and Korea, Korea, Korea means South Korea, definitely not, not North Korea and one of the purest places on earth. Okay, so why this setup is underground because this setup is, this setup tries to detect the dark matter right and dark matter for the detection of dark matter there has to be noiseless place because those signals are very very weak so if any noise is there around so it will hinder the the prospect and hinder the process of detection so that's why it these things are these setups are kept underground right so that's why it is also called that purest places on earth because there is no radiation no dust etc so that's why it is purest place the significance of dark matter so the significance of dark matter is it can be it can be used or it it can facilitate the unexplained motion of stars because there are movement of stars which is not understandable through un, uh, normal mechanics like newtonian mechanics so that's why this dark matter if you include them then only be then only you will be able to understand this uh, unexplained movements of stars understanding the evolution of universe because if you are trying to understand the evolution of universe and you are focusing only on the five percent of the of the universe that means you are not going to get the right answer to your questions that's why dark matter and dark energy have to be considered in your uh, in your setup in your calculations so that you could get and get us something 
some answer which is reliable and can be long lasting otherwise today if you calculate something tomorrow it will be negated because some other proof or some other data if comes out then your data all the calculations will be futile so this is how this uh, thing is so the next so the next is in this series james webb telescope i have just mentioned this telescope that even if you use this telescope you won't you will be only you will be able to only see 5% of the universe so the james webb telescope has seen and taken pictures of the the last i mean the oldest galaxy in the universe as far as this james james webb because there are far more older galaxies there that because the the distance the width the span the range of the universe is so so big that lights take 4.6 billion years to reach us 4.6 billion years can you imagine can you just fathom this data 4.6 billion years light years means uh, uh, 4.6 billion light years means light takes 4.6 billion years to reach us and the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second you can imagine this huge speed and this at this speed if you travel if you will, it will take you 4.6 billion years to from us to reach this galaxy which of which the picture i have just attached here so this is what this james webb telescope is all about because this is in news james webb telescope has just few days ago released a image an image and this is the very image in which galaxies have been shown which according to us i mean according to all the data that we have this is the farthest oldest galaxy we know till now so next is uh, l2 point l2 point is important because the uh, the james webb telescope is placed at this place only l2 point and that's why this place this term l2 l1 and l3 l4 l5 uh, is has become little important i'll just explain in a, in a quite quite, brief, quite briefly what these all points are so the l2 and these are called lagrange points uh, points and these are also known as the parking places in the space because here you can keep your your setup your satellite your telescope whatever it is your spaceships you can keep it there stable and you won't have to be you won't have to worry worry for anything else so there are five such points around sun so l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 at this point what happens is suppose that we have we, we our uh our james webb telescope is at this point l2 so what happens is it, this this uh, telescope moves around the sun right and also around the earth so what happens is the attraction force of attraction due to earth and force of attraction due to sun attracts it and this equals the centrifugal force at this point because if you know i mean you must have read in physics that if there is a circle and and uh, an object is moving like this so there is the centripetal force that attracts that keeps the this object in circular motion and it this is equal to the centripetal force centrifugal force which in this place is is e equal to balance is keep is able to keep the uh, object in in one place right same is same are these points like l4 and l3 and l5 so these points are like this only these are known as parking places in space okay so moving to the next topic which is onco oncolytic virotherapy which is again uh, related to us and this is very important because this has this is a development in medical science where cures for cancer has been found right the good thing is that 12 people in uh, us have been cured with this uh, therapy and they did not have any other issue so i mean did, did not go any other like for cancer you have either to go through chemotherapy which is very painful or radiation so radiotherapy these things are very painful and cancer it has no permanent cure no no sh sure cure so that's why this oncolytic virotherapy has become very important and the good thing is that it kills only cancer cells and not and other in uh, in uh, neighboring cells uh, remain very intact and they do not go through any deterioration or any harmful impact that's why this thing is very 
important right so you just have to keep this thing in your mind that onco is also known for cancer only oncology is related to the study of cancer so you can understand that oncolytic phototherapy is about cancer right moving to the next is national emblem so here we have a national emblem and this debate is going around in india that why this why these lions are roaring why why do we have this roaring lions at, as our national emblem and people are blaming the government and that they have manipulated the national emblem and the the lion hair so but we will not go into that controversy the only thing important for us is that this capital this lion capital has been taken from sarnath up which is from ashok related to ashoka ashoka and uh, this thing this land capital was adopted as a national emblem in tw on 26th january 1950 and there is a uh, there is a motto here written satyamev jayate which has been taken from pundaka upanishad so these things are important for us you need to keep these things only in mind and for other political stuff you can go through internet and see what debates what or controversies are going on so next is economy in economy a very significant movement a very significant development has happened which is rbi has internationalized rupee which means any international transaction can happen in rupee earlier it was forced we were forced to do all the transaction in dollar only because dollar was the only universal a currency that can be accepted easily now it now india has introduced and rbi has introduced rupee also so what is the reason behind this and how will this this happen we will know this thing this is for our uh, concern right so the first thing is no student goes through account okay we'll not go into that first thing is why is it why was it necessary because india wanted to trade with other countries which had sanctioned by us like iran russia like uh, korea or some other countries which has sanction or sri lanka for that matter because sri lanka is going through uh, economic crisis and if rupee has been internationalized we can trade with sri lanka directly right we do not have to trade in you i mean uh, dollar because sri lanka does not have dollars because sri lanka is going always already through a uh, foreign exchange crisis right so this is how this is what why the reason uh, we went through we went to the internationalization of rupee also one of the reasons is that rupee is at all time low against dollar so if we in, if we internationalize we can export we'll, we can increase our exports and increase in export will reach i mean help us gain the rupee against dollar to trade with sanctioned countries that i just mentioned like iran russia and all after russia ukraine war just started and russia was thrown out of the swift payment gateway it was it become it became very tough for the exporters to pay to russia or get payment from russia so for all these things we need to we had to do this and this is a wonderful thing and now the next thing is how will this happen so what happens is there is a nostro account there is a vostro account right and this is like if suppose we have to trade with russia so now one account will be there in russia in russian bank and there will be one account in indian bank and russian people suppose there is a this one person suppose i have to export something to russia so i will export things to russia and i will the payment will come through like suppose some xyz person sitting in russia will purchase my export my item so that person will deposit that money to russian bank and that russian bank russian bank will deposit that money to indian bank and that indian bunny indian bank will give me the currency indian currency which is rupee and the indian currency and the russian uh, ruble which is the, their currency their the, that exchange it will happen at the market rate so this is how it is and we do not have to go through the uh, dollar system so this is how it is right so next okay going to the next topic which is which is from geography and this is very important because if you see your question papers previous year papers you will see that your question paper carries a lot of questions from geography environment and science and tech that's why i have considered science and tech uh, questions and uh, geography also so there is a direco this uh, thing happened actually what happened is that 
few few days back in the, uh, in US skies turned sky turned green green why because there was a storm in USA right and so th the thing is that that storm is called Reco so that's why this has become important and the sky turned green and that green thing happened because the light interacting with huge amount of water they hold actually due to storm there was a lot of water vapor in the sky in the atmosphere and the light in started interacting with this water um, uh, water droplets there so light turned blue and that blue color again started interacting with the rays from the sun which is i mean during sunset it is like uh, red or orange so the blue color include i mean uh, started organ uh, interacting with the orange color and it turned green so blue plus orange or uh, red turns green this is how it was right that is the reason why sky turned green so the next is snake island so this is if you if, if there is a question where is the snake island it is in the black sea first of all right and this is a part of ukraine and re recently ukraine declared that it has got control of the snake island because they have defeated russia there so that's why this snake this place was in news statue of peace india has established uh, india has just erected a statue of peace in jammu and kashmir and uh, the, this is in the name of rama nuja which was a bhakti saint i mean the bhakti period saint and uh, yes in the in the name of rama nuja who was uh, who took birth in, who was the play, uh, i mean the rama nuja from tamil nadu right so st statue of peace is in the name of rama nuja right the next is colombo so this is our i mean in the current time in the recent time this has the, this is the biggest development that we had so let's see what is all about the sri lanka the first thing about sri lanka is the president is gotabaya rajapaksha and the prime minister is ranil vikramasinghe have decided to resign because of the protest going on all the people protesters entered the presidential palace and if you if you have watched the news you have you must have seen they were they were taking bath in pool and they were taking they were having fun on their bed and i, I saw one one video clip in which people were sitting turn by turn on the presidential chair in which the president used to sit that people use if people were sitting by uh, after every turn i mean turn by turn and there was a videography there so this is how that, that is how people were having fun there so their presidential palace has become a tourist place so that is not our concern actually the thing is that why why did this happen right why this uh, crisis happened the first is economic crisis balance of payment problem because of foreign exchange crisis because why the foreign exchange crisis because foreign exchange cri foreign exchange crisis happens when you have lot of spending and less earning so this is how happened in what happened in sri lanka spending is more than earning so spending kept there and earning reduced why because sri lanka is dependent on foreign currencies like tourism and all so let's see one by one what happened sri lanka rupee has lost more than 80% in the in its value first we'll not go to this first we'll see some other things food and fuel prices cost went up then tourism has significantly diminished why tourism has diminished because of covid-19 and easter bombing which happened in 2019 so this is one of the reasons why this happened this economic crisis happened in happening in sri lanka right now the next is fertilizer ban Sri Lanka decided to turn to become overnight an organic farming state organic farming nation 100% organic farming nation overnight that's why they've banned the fertilizer import that's ha that has impacted their economy like the food production has reduced and that's why they had to import food product food products food production has reduced tax cuts when Gotabaya Rajapaksha was running for presidential election he promised people of lower tax rates so when he won he reduced the tax rates and that 
impacted the government's earning so that's why again the their exchange there has their exchange has reduced i mean their reserve has reduced then china's debt trap policy again because of the wrong economic decisions policies china debt is hurting china i mean sri lanka and foreign policy obligation because already sri lanka was after 26 years of civil war sri lanka went came out of the that economic crisis and that happened because of the because because sri lanka took loans from imf now which is 7 billion by 2022 i mean this year the the total loan of sri lanka on sri lanka is of 7 billion so all this thing you can see that has impacted sri lanka a lot and their economic policies like tax cuts and economic that organic farming and some natural things some un uncontrollable things like easter bombing and covid 19 all this mix up of all these things has impacted sri lanka a lot and that's why the what happening now is happening there so this is the reason right so yes any development in case of sri lanka happening so we will cover that in the next series so yes now moving to next so g20 is again in the news because this uh, next year 2023 india is going to host g20 in j and k and ladakh right in ladakh and jnk india is going to have g20 meeting so few things are uh, i would like to tell you that in g20 there are only 19 countries and eu which has 27 members right eu was founded sorry g20 was founded in 1999 and uh, uh, it has members of international monetary fund imf and world bank so only our only neighbor one more thing is that our only neighbor which is China is there in G20 like no other na our neighbor like Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan no other country is there in G20 only, only, only China is there so you need to remember this if there is a question like which one of our country is in G which one of our neighbors is in G20 so it is only China right Nigeria was meant to be the 20th member but it was dropped last minute due to some political troubles at that time okay so the next is next uh, thing to remember about g20 is there is no fixed headquarters every year there is a g20 meeting that happens in different places and those places host as the headquarter and everything happens according to the host so next thing is sherpa these terms sherpa and troika meetings you need to remember sherpa is like if somebody is some person is from it as some specific country is coming to the g20 meeting some special envoy will accompany him and that is called sherpa right so troika meetings are like a common a, a, i mean a setup of three countries three countries like previous year the, uh, the the country which held the previous year meeting the country which is hosting the current year meeting and the country will which will host the next year i mean the future meeting summit sorry meeting should be replaced with summit future summit so this setup of three countries is known as troika right so in 2023 india will have the uh, g20 meeting in jnk and ladakh and that will be 18th and right now it is uh, had, i mean 2022 meeting summit is going to happen in indonesia bali right so this is how it is so next is iuu2 i2u2 and this is very important because let's see something about this i2u2 i2u2 is the west quad means there is a grouping which has emerged in west i mean i mean a central middle east and asia members are from middle east asia and the us like middle east is israel and uae and uh, india is then from asia and us is there so the i2 and u2 if you you can see very easily that i two i is from india and israel and two u from uae and us so this that's why the name is i2 and u2 so members are from middle east and asia the the objective of this is to f the first virtual summit of i2u2 will focus heavily on global food and energy crisis resulting from U conflict in ukraine so this is their uh, uh, agenda for the first meeting right the next is schemes okay schemes also carry a very important role in your examination because there are many questions from schemes and they ask not very uh, uh, very unknown schemes like they ask only very very highlighted schemes some schemes like 
if they are in 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 news for quite some time so then only they they last so mission shakti is important because mission shakti has merged many many schemes which were running for the, for the benefit and empowerment of women so this is how it is objective is the mission shakti objective is uh, 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 safety security and empowerment mission shakti has become actually umbrella scheme right umbrella scheme means it has many schemes under it so we'll see one by one all of them the components it has two components sambal and samarth right samarth is for empowerment samarth in hindi also means empowerment your your own ability right and sambal means also your your own force your own courage your endurance like things are there so safety and security of women so under this there are four components one step one stop centers for women help women helpline beti bachao beti padhao right and nari adalat for their faster resolution for crimes like rape molestation and all these things so gender justice for for all these for all these things there is nari adalat and beti bachao Th these four things are there under sambal scheme right and there samarth scheme also under there are uh, three were uh, three uh, uh, subsections like ujwala scheme which is related to lpg in under which the the lpg cylinders were distributed to women of uh, i mean in the name of uh, the senior most women of the family then swadhar grih which is for all those women who have who are in destitute condition and who do not have anywhere to go or anyone to go to so they will go to the swadhar grih and there they will get Uh, legal support and their physical support and food and medical support all these things they will get there working women hostels in uh, cities in larger cities women come from small villages and small towns so they will get working women hostels there in which they will have all the facilities so apart from these national crash crash scheme is there crash scheme is is means that if if there is a working woman and if she has a child so there has to be a facility where she wherever she works to take care of her child right so there is a crash facility and she will have she will keep her child there there are very small kids who women have to accompany because if she is working the child has to be with the mother only because of because a small child with are uh, i mean dependent on the breastfeeding only so that's why those child has to be accompanied with mother and child normally the young child stays stays with mother only because the child gets lot of affection and care from mothers fathers also can take care of them but mothers i mean that what mothers do cannot be replaced with any other person so for this thing this uh, this step is wonderful and very commendable the next is pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana this is for uh, 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 this is maternity benefit matru vandana yojana matru means mother and this is for maternity benefit in which 5000 rupees is being given to all those women who are pregnant and who are not working under any central government schemes or any not or who are not employed under central government rather and uh, they will get 5000 in three installments so this is how this is right so we'll move to the next topic which is okay important terms in news so few things i have mentioned here like katsa is in news quite some for quite some time now and the reason is that the us congress has decided to pass a uh, to pass a law in which they will they will not sanction india for purchasing s400 right because india decide, india has purchased s400 from russia and that thing goes against the uh, usa's law katsa katsa means countering america's adversary through sanctions act means some uh, usa's i mean america's adversary is there if you trade with them they will put sanction on you they will slap sanctions on you economic sanction could be there any other sanction could be there so the turkey has fallen prey to this and turkey turkey has been sanctioned for purchasing s400 from russia but the usa cannot do the same thing with india because india us relationship is changing the whole dynamics is changing in the in the last few years so usa is has decided to pass a law in which usa will not sanction india so this is how it is now let's move to what is s400 missile system right this missile system is quite is 
has been quite in news for quite some time so this is surfaced first of all first thing is that this is a surface to air missile system which is like a, a air guidance i mean the air defense system if some uh, suppose china actually for the reason for purchasing s400 is that we want safety from china and pakistan also because in fact pakistan is not a threat for us china is a threat for us we can deal with pakistan very easily if there is a head to head war if, if there is a face to face war but in case of china china is very stronger than india so it will be very tough for us to to fight china so that's why we are building ourselves building our capabilities and it the first step in which we we, we moved is that s400 we purchased s400 from russia so the s400 is is also in uh, in competition with thard thard is a, uh, a system by usa which which solves, serves the same purpose right the the range is of s400 is 400 kilometers and height is up to 30, 30 kilometer it can track 30 meter and it can track 100 airborne targets and engage six of them simultaneously so this is the this 400 kilometer range appears here also s400 so this is how it is so moving to the next father of indian chemistry so this is i think the last topic of this uh, series today father of indian chemistry is achar praful chandra ray this person has is known as a father of indian chemistry he was also a freedom fighter and he discovered a stable compound which is known as mercurous nitrite in 1895 so this is his this was his achievement and was a nationalist true nationalist and he was against caste system and other irrational social systems he was in news so that's why i have covered this if somebody asks if there is a question like who is the who is the father of indian chemistry so it must be known to you it must be available to you that it was achar praful chandra ray so with this we have covered this uh, uh, this week's current affairs important current affairs and for uh, for uh, with this we have just ended this uh, uh, video for today so thanks for watching thanks a lot